Hey there, everyone. So we have been having a great discussion about paper and it started because I ordered this Fabiano paper to give it a try and it just went completely wonky and I couldn't figure out why. But in any case, I thought this is a great time to get out these watercolor sketchbooks and try and figure out, you know, which one performs better because we all have you know, this, this lovely affection for arches, hundred percent cotton paper and Canson. But, you know, in reality, as a beginner, you can't always, you know, paint on, um, every expensive paper as you're just developing your art. So it makes sense to try and find something convenient, something small. Now, let me just start this out by saying, um, over the few years that I have been doing watercolor every single day, it has come down to this for me. I have really, really loved these um, Paul Rubens watercolor sketchbooks. And they are hot press sketchbooks. But as you can see, they perform really, really well for me. And especially with like everything that I do from wet backgrounds to um, you know, washes to just like really intense color, pretty much anything I try on these, it really works out. So that's why I'm kind of an advocate of this, um, sketchbook, but I've also done a lot of things with all of these too. So let's kind of go through them and let's do a quick, after we discuss it, we'll do a really, really quick, um, some like watercolor flowers and stuff on these and see how they perform wet on wet and then also wet on dry. Now this is the, um, this is considered a sketchbook by Paul Rubens. It's a block. You guys have asked me about it so many times. It's a hundred percent cotton. It's a hot press and it's already glued and it comes in this really, really lovely, um, like almost like a faux leather finish, just like the little small sketchbooks. These I take everywhere with me with my little like uh, custom made travel palette that was just actually a pencil case. <laughs> and then I also, but I love it because I can fit so many colors and these are full pans. Um, and then I also have like my, uh, my regular travel. Um, what is it? The travel, the travel, uh, watercolor palette. I can't remember the name of the company that made it. I think it's Windsor Newton. I did a video on it. You can go and check it out. That's really great too. Cause it has water cups with it. But this one holds a lot more paint, so I always keep this on hand. So in any case, this is what I'm using now. So every time you see me posting these little sketches, um, these preliminary trials and stuff, it's done in hot press. The main difference between hot press and cold press, though, is basically the finish. Hot press is going to have a very smooth finish, which for me, you know, is fine in the journals because... I don't know. I just love the way it looks. I love the way it dries. It changes the painting as it dries. So it really develops and it does it, it kind of like it's very forgiving to me. So even if I make mistakes, I always wait to see what happens when it's dry because when it's dry, it looks amazing. So as you can tell, I can pretty much do anything. The color stays vivid. It's just really really, really nice. So yeah, this is not a commercial for Paul Rubens. It's just, I'm explaining to you guys what I was trying to write in our group page, which is linked below by the way. Okay. So that's the Paul Rubens. I've done, um, some work in this 400 series. This is 400 series paper by Strathmore. I have tried the 300 series and I cannot, I cannot paint very well on it. I just don't like the way it looks. It looks okay, but it's not great. Um, so yeah, so I usually use this for swatches because the 400 series is very smooth on this one and it is a cold press. Um, again, I don't really think that this is necessarily any different than this hot press paper. And this is a hundred percent cotton. This is not. So to me, I would rather work on a hundred percent cotton paper and this is really well priced. So I think that's why I keep going back to the sketchbooks, aside from the fact that they're really well made, right? Um, but this is just all kinds of different kinds of paint that I've done on this. So we're going to put this here so that we can do our trial. I need a pen. Let's see. Here we go. So this is the 400 series Strathmore. So 
So let's just label that. The visual journal, this comes in two sizes. 140 pound watercolor paper is cold press. This is not 100% cotton, um, but I've done all kinds of stuff on it. I've tried so many different things. Now, as you can see, the washes, it will lose color if you're not really careful. So as I was kind of painting, I had to go really, really heavy with the paint in order to get the vivid colors because I just gave up on a lot of these. But once I got the hang of it and I learned that I just had to use a lot of less water and a lot of paint, then I was able to get a lot more vivid colors but that was the only way I could do it on this paper and this is very smooth as well it's very similar to the hot press smooth um, in cold press you usually hear the word tooth and sometimes there's going to be a smooth or rough and the smooth is much easier for people to paint on this is smooth a rough is a little harder to paint on and I find that some people um, don't really love to paint it. It wears your brushes down a lot more, but there's an effect, right, on a rough, um, on a rough paper. So let's go ahead and label this one. This is the Visual Journal Strathmore Visual Journal. Strathmore Visual Journal. Okay. So there's another one. Canson. Canson makes a really great expensive paper called Canson Heritage, which I paint on a lot, but it is very pricey in the States and also Canada. I don't really know internationally if it's better priced or not. Um, the sketchbook, again, I have done, like I did this watercolor tutorial for a class, but, a, but the, the washes dry a lot lighter and you have to go in again and really add color otherwise your washes are going to be very very light here's where i added um, acrylic over watercolor and this is watercolor so again the wash is very very light this might look like it's dark but it's compared to some of the other stuff i do it's actually it this should not be this light this was a very very vivid color and it just dried light Here's one I did where I really saturated the color. Um, I didn't do a lot of wet on wet. I kind of brushed the wet on there, but it started to buckle the paper. So, and it really does a lot of blooming. So if you don't like a lot of blooms, these non 100% cotton papers are really going to be a pain. This is a great example of my dogs, but this is a great example of what arches is like. This is 100% uh, cotton paper. So arches or Canson heritage perform like this for me. And the paper is amazing, right? And it kind of feels crispy. It's a lot different, uh, but you can do wet on wet washes and you can see how vivid the colors come as compared to here. You get these blooms. You don't really get the blooms unless you want the blooms on these hundred percent cotton papers. So there is like a very different feel to this but for a sketchbook um this is not bad really not bad i still love the other ones i like the hot press um but for a sketchbook it performs pretty good it's not it's not too bad and it, it's got a little bit of a tooth to it it's pretty smooth but not as smooth as the hot press paper this is more like a um like the canson xl it's very much like the Canson XL, which I actually painted all of these for the tutorial on Canson XL. So the Canson wired sketchbook is very, very much like Canson XL. It's just got a wire on it. And this is the Montval watercolor. This is a nine by 12. I love the fact it's 140 pounds. I love the fact that it's big. You know what I mean? Because sometimes it's hard to find sketchbooks that have these really nice backing and they're very large and they, you know, they do a decent job. So, so far, I think Canson was my better performing of the two, um, Strathmore versus Canson, but we're going to test them out again. And I'm just going to tell you how I feel about it. So this is the Montval Canson. And last is the one that I just recently ordered. I ordered a bunch of them, which I'm really bummed about because if I don't make this work, I literally have this in four books and two sizes. <laughs> a lot of it. It's Fabriano. I had heard good things about it, but 
I don't know. It's going to take a little while. It really is not my favorite. It's, I mean, it was so impressive, right? One, two, six, four. Everybody says good things about Fabriano paper. So I was like, oh, there's like a sketchbook. Let me try it. <laughs> and it was a little bit of a nightmare. Um, was the color big? Here, let me show you. Okay, so the color, I did get vivid color um, on the Fabriano. And for some of you, you absolutely love this, <laughs> but it was really hard to do. So where usually one brush stroke would just take care of it, it actually, even when it wasn't wet on wet, this was wet on dry and it just bloomed and the color just, just exploded, just dissipated. I mean, like it's just not there. This was the color and it changed. So it would do these crazy blooms. Now, in an abstract like this, not so bad. The, the rough brush strokes, the whole thing, not so bad if you wanted it like this, but I literally couldn't do anything else with the paper. So luckily I like to do a lot of abstract. Maybe I'll just do a lot of abstract for tutorials, but I hate to advertise this paper because it's a struggle, right? Um, I'm definitely gonna have to paint differently on this paper. Now, with that being said, we were talking about this on the group page that you you learn and develop as you go right and a lot of times um you'll do something and go along with a certain kind of paper and you're like oh okay well it works for me well it works for you right because you probably haven't done anything else and it's good like that but i don't want to give anybody false impression that this is an easy paper to paint on this is the paul rubens for those of you asking me if there is a cold press block of Paul Rubens, yes, this is what it looks like. I bought a ton of these. They get, you can get them online um, all over actually. A lot of different websites sell them. It's Paul Rubens, acid free, great for wet on wet. That is what I did this on actually. And it turned out really, really great. I do a lot of things on this. Um, in fact, this is done on that paper too so you can see it's it's got a little bit of a tooth a little bit more than let me see if it's a little more than the hot press yeah the hot press is very very smooth the hot press 100 percent cotton this one has a little more of a tooth i don't know if you can tell i'm in the window so maybe it's a little bit of a tooth and it's nice. And I do, I love this. I really do. So I have a bunch of books of it. It's so economical. And I actually paint more on this than I do on Arches and um, Canson Heritage because the size is so large. And I love to do these great big florals on this size. It's a paper block 15.4 inches by 10.6. And it's glued. It performs so great. It really does. And I can tape it if I want to. So that we will do on another day when we do the, um, the more expensive papers, like we'll do, I'll do another comparison with Canson arches and that one. Yeah. So really good. All right. So that's the discussion. <laughs> let's, let's start with Fabriano. Shall we, or should we, should we put it aside and start with one that's easier? I don't know. Maybe, maybe we'll start with this little guy because he's my favorite okay this is gonna be fun I have actually never done this test before I'm reorganizing my main big studio palette here so I just cleaned it out I don't think I have all my colors in here but I have some yellows and I love to start with yellow so let's start there and then I definitely need this palette because this is where the most of the colors are right now. Okay, so I'm going to need something to use to just spread the paint. So we'll line that up. And let's just get some fun brushes. What should we try? I think you guys seem to really like the cornflower. Why don't we recreate the cornflowers on this one? 
that was done with several different brushes actually this cornflower was the one that won your vote you like this one and you like this one so i think you like the colors of this one and you liked the shape of this one it was done with the snap brush by princeton and my rigger gotta find it this one is the escoda 2 by the prado and i also have one i did have one up oh, let's go to four versatile so i'm going to keep these on hand okay let's just get some paint wet here i'm going to do let's wet the yellows because i think we should do a a little bit of wet on wet and then wet on dry when we do these so i'm just going to wet my palette down so everything's kind of getting nice and saturated Maybe we'll use up some of these paints. Okay, so I got plenty to work with. I need a wash brush. Let's use this one because it's a little. No, wait. We'll use a soppy wash brush. This is going to be a soppy one, out of control soppy. Let's go to 18 Ultimo. Okay, so. Let's put a little bit of yellow on the background and I'm going to wet it down a lot. You know what? Just for the sake of time, we can do two. We can do two at a time. So this is the Strathmore 400. You can see already this really held the color. It just grabbed the water and loved it and spread it really evenly. This one's already starting to streak. It's um, to streak and notice the vibrancy. Vibrant, not vibrant. I have to use a lot more color to get a vibrancy and it's just, it's just spreading, right? So this is Strathmore 400. I have to use several strokes to get in there and really get color, which is limiting because then it changes what the painting is going to be like. Here, I just went over it once and that was it. It's really, really wet. I don't know if I can do, no, I can't do it. This one holds on to all the water like crazy. All right, let's put this aside. So we're going to use that in a second. Then let's start doing our flower. So I'm just going to grab some blues. And let's just add some color for a base. Get a lot of color on your brush. We were just discussing this, that if your brush doesn't have enough color on it or has too much water, it won't do the same thing. So just kind of spread it out, make sure it doesn't have too much on it and let's see how it goes. Yeah, too much water. If that happens, this is like a painting lesson at the same time, but we, we were discussing why some of them didn't work out for some of the people that were trying them, trying these little cornflowers. You don't want this brush to have too much water. So just wipe the base until it does that. And then try not to go over it too much because if you go over these, brush strokes too much or it's too wet they will just combine especially if the paper isn't 100% cotton okay so there's that one it takes it okay but what I'm noticing right away uh, that I have to do differently is this one, it pulls the water in so that it's not creating puddles. So let me show you. So this wet on dry, it did not create a puddle. It just soaked the paint in so that it's ready to be worked a little bit more. 
So now I can go in and just add a little more depth. And this is what I'm saying is this just is so much easier to work on. Okay, so see what I was able to do? I was able to add texture. I'm gonna go ahead and take even on wet. I'm gonna take some of this blue and drop it in so that we have a little bit of blue. This is my number two Escoda Prado. I love this. I actually ordered more sizes in this rigger because I got it in a set and it's just amazing. I love it. Okay, here we go. Now I put that on wet, so we're gonna watch it spread just to see what happens. Now the Strathmore 400, you can see what happened. It started puddling and as a result, our flower is now puddling. So it's not going to have the kind of definition that the other flower has. And as I add more um, little strikes, what's happening is the puddles are just combining. So we're going to end up with kind of a puddly mess that looks like it's all one tone, where this one has multiple tones and variations of the same color. So see what a difference right away, why I think uh, things work out so much better with the other one. And now my only option in doing this, unless I really wait for it to dry, is to add the color on top, which is actually a much different effect. So you paint much differently. And um, I think my big point is for beginners, um, if you don't want to struggle with these techniques that we're all teaching you, you have to paint differently on these really inexpensive non-cotton papers without a doubt you know so it might be better to get some of like maybe the ones that are 100 percent cotton and just cut them into smaller sheets cut them into like really little sheets like maybe invest in a, a pad that's a little more money or find a sale at michael's or something uh, get something that is 100% cotton that you like and then cut it into small sheets and make make your own little sketchbook out of it or go ahead and get the hot press by Paul Rubens. All right, so let's look at the difference between these two. Vast difference to me. So you can see this one I had to paint differently in order to get this effect. The yellow just kind of uh, faded a lot. See how brilliant the other one is? The yellow is a lot darker. There's more definition in our cornflower. And this one almost became a sloppy mess. I had to really wait till it dried and then I layered it a little bit, but I had to use a lot more paint. So that really, to me, right there, it just shows you a huge difference. All right, we're gonna set the 400 aside. Let's try the same thing on the Canson. Set this over here so you guys can still see it. See if I can fit. This is the Strathmore Visual Journal versus the Canson. Was it the Montreal? Which are very similar, I feel. Okay, the Visual Journal, it's like a slick service <laughs> compared to what I'm used to. The, the, um, my paint just doesn't even catch, it just sits on the surface almost like there's a sizing preventing it from going in. Um, it's a little bit better on the Canson. It's taking the paint in and I'm able to get a little more brilliant color and I can get a little more streaks. This one, definitely the Strathmore. Again, Strathmore is failing me. It does not like me. Yeah, this is just sitting and pooling where this one it's taking it in. So by far, the Montreal Canson, way better sketchbook. Strathmore, Visual Journal, so disappointing. I remember Visual Journals. This is like what I started with. I struggled so much. <laughs> okay, so this is just still sitting on top. We'll let it dry and see what happens. This one did a good job. I can actually do some, some extra things. It's 
sunk into the paper and it's not bad. I still, my Paul Rubens, I can go back and streak it. That's great. This one is drying. So I'm just going to add some streaks. Okay, let's go on. Get a little blue. This is actually fun. I should do more of these. kind of can figure out what this is going to turn out like. We have cornflowers everywhere today. Oh, this is puddling so badly. Oh, you poor guys. If you have this, you're struggling so much. Really? Yeah, you have to paint so different on this one. The Montreal, Canson Montreal. Oh, this is nice. This actually gives you some dry brush strokes. The other one doesn't at all because it just pools. So I have a nice winner here. Yeah, dry brush strokes. It sinks into the paper really, really well. This is a cold press. It's got a little bit of tooth. I like it. I like that a lot. I would order that again, actually. Let's go ahead and see our stem test. I like the fact that it, it does sink in and encourage a little blooming there. This one's just a mess. I don't like the way it's blooming either. Um, let's rinse this off and add our other color. A little bit of cobalt turquoise. Yeah, this is just a sopping mess. This is actually even worse than the uh, than this the other Strathmore. Strathmore, what are you doing to us? You are working against us big time. Okay, so you see what happened to there. This is such a great comparison video. I'm really excited that we did this one. I think I'm going to be sharing this one with you for a long time in our group pages because seriously okay I'm getting a little more dry brush with this brush but it's amazing that it would not do it before so I had to work with this a lot more and I just cannot stand um, that it bled this much it's crazy Oh, I can pick up on it, but the problem is, is it's just going to give us a big streak, so you can't really fix it. Yeah, this is better. You can pick up and it's not going to make too much of a mess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's because it takes the water in so easily. Okay, so let's look closely. So this one, um, very similar, I would say. Let me put my brushes down. So the Montreal Canson, I like this. This is a nice sketchbook. It's a good size. It's a, got a great weight and it handled the color pretty well. It did not hold the color as brightly as the Hot Press by Paul Rubens. The hot press by Paul Rubens held the color so much nicer and it gave me a much nicer effect on my flower. But this is so far my second choice. I like it. As far as, I don't want to set the wet ones down, the two Strathmores, the Visual Journal and the Strathmore 400. The Visual Journal, total crap. I cannot stand it. It's still puddled and it hasn't even sunk in. There's no dry. It's just kind of like a soupy mess. So that's impossible to get detail. And then this one dried okay. The 400 performed decent, 
but I went back to try and do some streaks and it did nothing. It just like that. Right. And I don't love that because that gives you like no flexibility at all. I went back and streaked this one and you can see the streaks. There's some nice little streak effects. So it did exactly what I wanted it to do. It just held the color and, and did its job. And that's uh, probably why I just keep doing well on those, right? All right, time for Fabriano. <laughs> I need to like find a place to put these. Good thing I have so much, so many tables. All right, here we go. Are you ready? I'm actually dreading this. <laughs> Let me wipe off this so I don't get green. Oh Lord, just got a lot of water, oops. Okay, so Fabriano, I was so excited about this because it had tooth and I thought, oh, that's interesting. You know, I think I'm gonna really like that. So here's what's happening. So it is sinking in, it's not staying on the surface, but the problem is, is it's drinking the color so just like before, I have to use a lot. I just used a lot of paint to get this. So now let's see what that does. And we're going to let it get really soppy over here at the bottom. Okay, so that's kind of sitting. All right, we're done with that. Okay, back to our brush here. A little bit of water, not much. Okay, still does better than the Strathmore, so maybe I can still use these. Let's see. It's like I said, I might be able to still use them because of my style, you know? I think actually we're going to try a wash on another sheet. So hang out. Okay. Not bad, but let's see what it does. Not bad. This actually was better than my first three paintings that I tried to do on this paper. So I'm kind of feeling a little bit, I'm feeling a little bit better about my investment. <laughs> I mean, seriously, I have a lot of this stuff. <laughs> it's, it's really, really puddling, but I kind of want to see what it does. Oh God, it's puddling so much that literally it's running to other areas that I did not paint. Okay. That I don't love, but again, we can figure it out, right? I usually don't let it pool like that. I just did it so that we could see. Okay. I love the fact that it's, it's saving itself right now because I can get a dry brush effect on it and the tooth on it makes me a little happy because I don't have one that has tooth. I think this is a wood pulp paper, I believe. Okay. There we go. Nice. It handled that pretty well, actually. Let's see what it does. Okay, I'm kind of like feeling better about this paper right now. Let's just add some bleeds and see how it handles it. Don't, I don't love it. Let's do the same thing on our other ones. Okay. So, hmm, I don't love what it did there. I don't love this, um, this pooling, but at the same time, so it does work against a beginner for sure. But at the same time, 
you could just adjust the way you paint, right? I can lift. The paper is buckling big time, which didn't happen at all. So, you know, the question is, do I love it because of the tooth? Uh, would I buy it? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think I would buy this ever again because it's, it's really a struggle. But I kind of like it even better than the Montreal Canson. I love the Paul Rubens. We're going to do one on the Paul Rubens book, I think, just to see if the texture is different. But I love the Paul Rubens one. This is beautiful. Like, here, let's pretty it up for you. So I'm going to take a uh, Neptune and take a little background color. And we're just going to add some rolly texture. Notice I can go right over what's dry and it's not going crazy on me. And that's a technique that you can only do with a really good paper. <laughs> Don't try this on a really bad paper because it just, it will not work out. So that's kind of neat. It gave me, yeah, so that worked out. Now, if I try to do it here, I don't hate this actually. I just don't like what it did here. It really just splits the color. The color is just sitting on top. But for a very, very inexpensive paper, I don't think I would recommend it but I might just be able to use it just for sketches and to think things out. The only problem is that literally you're so limited as to what you can do with this. Now, if you wanted this effect, if this is your style, then, you know, Hey, maybe not such a bad paper cause it's inexpensive, right? But I don't love it. I don't love the way it's blooming. Not that much. Um, Let's go back in. Oops. Making a mess. So this one does the same. It does this very similar bloom. Okay, so I purposely made a huge mess. So I would really have to work with this one. Um, to bring back my yellow. My yellow is not so bad on here. I don't know, the texture kind of saves the painting. You know what I mean? On this one. So it's actually not doing too bad. It is buckling really badly. But I could work with this. So I'm not, not, I'm not feeling too bad about it anymore. I'm really glad I did this test today. <laughs> Surprisingly, it is surprising me right now. Okay, so my Paul Rubens, I still love this. I really do. It's just got more flexibility and I can do a lot of different, as you can see, I can, I'm starting to do some blended washes for a blurry background. I can totally do that on here. I cannot do the blurry background on here, but I was able to get like more of a textured look. It kind of doesn't look great, but it's okay. I mean, like this isn't bad. Um, I don't love the blooms. I would have to kind of work with them. So it does work against me, but you just paint a little differently on this one. This one, I feel like this is just looks so cheap. And I don't think that this would handle the majority of the sketches that I do. You know, I just think as what Canson was kind of winning over this one at first, but now looking at it and the performance as it dries, it dried so light. It's just taking from the color and I feel like it would just work against me. So nope, I definitely wouldn't do that one again. And then back to Strathmore, just majorly disappointing. I mean, the color is just gone. Our vivid yellow is gone. The the flowers look flat. I just don't like either one of the Strathmores at all. So those can go. 
and will not be touching those again. The Fabriano, I think we should do a wash and see what happens with it. And let's do a wash with the Paul Rubens and let's line these two up and see what they do. So hang on. Let's get, let's just get some cleaned up here. This is why this white Ikea table is so easy because I can get it really messy and then just clean it up. This is really fun. I am like so surprised at how this one is uh, up here right now. Let's see. Oh, I can rip it out pretty easily. Look at that. Not bad. It came out. All right. All right. All right. Not bad. <laughs> Okay, guys, here we go. We're going to do a wash. Um, let's do a quick sunset wash. So we've got the block and we have this one. All right. Here's my big guy. Let's get... Uh, let's get the paper wet. Paper wet. Just take this wash brush. I have a feeling this is going to, because this isn't on a block, so it's literally going to go crazy. So I just wet it. Uh, some of it is kind of dry. Some of it is very, very wet. Like We're going to let the sun area be hugely wet and the bottom area be slightly dry. So I have a puddle. Now, normally I don't paint on a puddle, but let's just do the most dramatic circumstances available. Okay. So I'm going to put in my sun. Okay, so right off the bat, can you see? Let me move this so that we have more sun on this one. What's happened here is on the Fabriano paper, it didn't maintain the center. It just pulled it all in and spread it out. Here, it maintained the center. So, and I can actually go in and paint a little more rough brush stroke. And this one's just kind of, you know, I'm painting differently on this one than this one. This is a really good test right now. Okay, so let's put this away. And let's take a little bit smaller brush. This one holds a lot of water. I'm just, just going to make a big old mess because I want it to, I want to really challenge the paper with water. Normally I would grab one that didn't, didn't have as much water, um, but... Let's just challenge this. So now I'm taking some Quinn Rose mixed with Opera Rose. And I'm going to just give it some color. I'm going to lay the color on and see what happens to it. And this is the dry brush area. Okay, let's blend this color out. It's holding up. It is puddling a bit. But it's taking a beating right now. The colors I noticed are a little different, like they're altering on this one just a bit. Let's see if we can reestablish our center. Okay, we can reestablish the center, which is good. It's amazing how this looks red. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, 
Okay, again, I'm using the soppiest brush I can find to encourage bleeds. Okay, let's dry my brush out. Let's pick up more yellow and create that orange. This is very fast. Okay, so let's try and remove the color because we want to back off some of the orange so we don't lose all of our yellow. Let's add yellow back. Okay, so here's where Fabriano is, is kind of failing. I just added the color and the yellow is almost going white. Here, the color's holding. I'm going to add some clean water to the center. So the block is blooming, but again, it's flat paper, right? This has a little bit of tooth to it. So I'm actually altering the way I paint for both of these right now. All right, not terrible. Now what I have to do with this one is I'm going to have to get some of the water off because it's not left me any room. It's kind of a soppy mess. So uh, the problem is, is that I have to find a way to add color without adding more water. Where this one, not so much, just a little bit on the top. So we're going to switch brushes because if I add any more water to this, it's just going to, it's just going to really hate me. <laughs> so let's go ahead and grab um, some cerulean. And I'm going to start adding that cerulean in the side here. This is on dry and I'm going to work it into my color. little dry brush. This is just a very, very quick, I am not going to do a good job on these paintings because literally we'll be here all day. And this is just a test just to see how it handles something really fast and dry brushing versus wet on wet versus um, wet on dry. So this is wet on dry right there. Here's some dry brushing. Not bad. Okay. Let's go ahead and put the blue on the other side. Okay, a little more pink. It's kind of just get those moody pieces in there. Just for a little more drama. It makes my orange stand out a bit. Now I left this one alone a little bit so that I can see what happens when I come back to it. And just a little more blend on the yellow. So um, if you want to know the paint colors, 
the yellow I used was Nickel Azo by Daniel Smith. The uh, pink is a mixture of Quin Rose and Opera Rose. Opera Rose does fade over time, so Quin Rose will help maintain the color. There are some colors out there though that I'm looking at right now that are very, very close to Opera Rose, but they don't fade. And I'll probably, once I run out of Opera Rose, I'll probably start um, using those entirely instead. So just adding some more dry brush, just some quick dimension here. for a little bit, little pop of color with a not so wet brush. This is probably the quickest, the quickest ones I've ever done. <laughs> okay, I don't wanna keep working them because literally we'll be here all day. Okay, I kind of like that. Not bad. Okay, so see I had the ability to do some different things here with this and then I can go back in and I can actually continue to work it if I didn't want uh, this to look so streaky and I wanted to add kind of like cloud lines. I could go back in and even give me um, some different clouds if I wanted to. This is a great brush. It's the Escoda 12 Prado. It it just, it really, it's almost like a versatile. It, to me, I just love this brush. I would totally order this in more sizes. Actually, I think I have some. Yeah, I do. I have a size 8 and a size 12. I mean, what else could you possibly want in life? Now, here's the problem. Look at how brilliant this is, and look at how this has lost its color. So, I'm going back to my original decision because that is just ridiculous. That shouldn't have happened. All right, let's work on this one now. Now that we've got this. Now see, look at that. That turned out so nice. This is just insane. I should not have to go back. You know what I mean? Now, if I were a beginner, that would be heck that would be so frustrating and you would get discouraged now let's see if we can do something with this I don't even know what I can do with this let's do let's do some dry brushing first um, with our pink I'll just add really really and now this is just gonna waste a ton of paint because I'm gonna I could easily use a whole full pan just to get the vibrancy back on this size and I don't even think I'm going to do it because it's just a waste. I'm not going to like it. So second layer, which is going to streak like crazy. So if you were trying for an even, an even um, wash, good luck. That's not happening with this paper at all. Let's rinse this out and get my brushes out of the water. Don't leave your brushes in the water, even if you don't have time to clean them. Don't leave them there. Ah, it's frustrating. Okay, guys, I don't even know that I want to finish this because you can see where this is going, right? Let's bring the yellow back. Try and blend it. I can't blend on paper very well. Ah, you almost redeemed yourself. See you sneaky paper you. It almost like tried to give us more performance so that 
on the flour, on the corn flour. So I would judge it differently. But like, who wants a paper that you can't do different techniques with? I mean, you don't want to be switching papers constantly, right? Okay. Yeah, it's not going to do those clouds at all. You be like, oh, she doesn't paint so good. If you, if you turn into this tutorial at this moment in time, you'd be like, she doesn't paint very well at all. Oh my God, this is such a nightmare. Ugh. Let's see. I'm just going to add some streaks across and see if I can get something going. Please. I'm actually begging the paper. This is still hanging in there and I even got a drop on it. Look at that. I bet you I can fix it. Look at that. I can actually fix it. Interesting. It's like I still want to work on this one because I love the the different colors and things are okay I'm leaving it alone now <laughs> all right here we go with the blue there's nothing really for me to to mix on paper because every time I put that where's the color going like literally I put the color on and it just kind of disappears. It's not running off, but I don't know where it's going. Okay, you see how much paint I have to use? I'm literally using a brush that is almost dry, filled with paint. Oh my goodness. I can't believe this. This is outrageous. I feel like a five-year-old has painted this. I'm going to keep going, though, just to see. Dry brush down here. It's bleeding. Yeah, I just... Much different than... You just have to paint differently. Even, like, the texture... I like the texture, but the problem is, is even the dry brushing doesn't really, Ugh, I hate this. What happens is it pools and then it spreads the color. So it's very difficult. So all your choices really are is just to add streaks of more color. And it's actually pulling It's pulling the pink, like it's just, the pink just won't stay. It's so strange. Okay, I'm giving up now. Okay, that's as good as I can get this. Bring some more yellow back in. I cannot get an even transition at all here. If I add any more water to try and give it a transition, it will just break the color apart and it just becomes almost nothing. And now it's turning to brown. So it's, you just have to overwork it. Okay. Not happy with that, but I am happy with this. So here's what we were able to do. We were able to get some depth and dimension as it's drying. Now this is going to continue to dry and do different things as it's drying. It's actually spreading and blending the color, but not taking from the color, right? So if I went back, I have the ability to tap in some brightness. See, because it's already dry there. So I can go back and add a little more detail to the painting. And it's forgiving. So this is what I mean by forgiving. The painting is, is doing the work for me. The, the paper is doing the work for me. It's actually starting to blend the colors. And that makes a huge difference because that's what watercolor 
you know, water with these colors, they should keep activating. They should keep doing amazing things as the paper dries. The paper shouldn't be um, actually breaking up the color. You know, you don't want your colors to be broken up. You don't want to waste a lot of paint and not be able to, you know, see those depth of colors, those beautiful, beautiful watercolors, you know? See, I can do so much with this and it, it will just take it, you know, I'm reworking, reworking, reworking. You guys are going to end up uh, buying so much Paul Rubens. I'm not going to be able to get it anymore. <laughs> I'm going to have to call them. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, I can do so much more with this. This is beautiful. Let's take my cerulean through and just enhance my water. It's just a pleasure, you know? And for a sketchbook, uh, yeah, then I would I could take this idea onto arches or something. And let me show you what I can do on arches. Okay. Compared to this, where it's very streaky, very blotchy, this will not blend. You can see. So, I mean, if you like this look, then you can use a lot of your paint to get it. It's also really, really warping. And I don't like that it's puddling up here. It's kind of making a messy puddle. Where this one, if you notice what it did with the puddles, they go away. It just takes it in, it drinks it in, and it just lets the color keep activating, keep blending. So it's very forgiving. This is going to dry with some pretty harsh lines and blooms and you've got blooms here, it's distracting. And if you like this, this effect, you'd be okay. But who, I don't know anybody who paints like this. You know what I mean? And I really don't. And it's, to me, this is gonna work against me this whole time. Look at, look at what's happening here. Like this is now, because it's so wet, it's bleeding down. It's bleeding down into this area. So this area was the wetness, this is actually moving and it's changing the paint. I mean, I think I didn't get it to look too bad, but I don't like it at all. And I just had to work against it. Let me get you this painting. So here's the same painting done on a very expensive watercolor paper. Get my brush out of this water. So this is how it should look. Um, this is done with the exact same colors I just used, but you see the blend. So it should blend out and we should be able to maintain the color. The cerulean should mix with the pink and become a nice purple. It should mix with the yellow and become a beautiful orange. But what happened is look at this. It's just a mottled mess. And it not only that, but these are the same colors, but they're just not even performing well. They're streaking and doing horrible, horrible things. This is how it should be. And this is how the paper made it. So same artist, same colors, same brushes, but it just like no way, right? There's no way. Um, this is a little bit closer, but with that being said, I used a lot more water on this than I used on this. And this is a very expensive paper. So I still think if you're going to do sketches, this is better. This hot press paper is much better for sketches so that you don't waste your really, really good watercolor paper. But this is the effect we were trying to achieve and it just didn't happen. All right, guys, let me know what you think. If you have a paper that performs well for you, that is an inexpensive paper um, for your sketchbooks, then let me know. I would love to see what it is that... Um, that you're working with and who knows maybe we will end up doing some more of these trials because why not right <laughs> this is pretty interesting now that these are all drying I'm gonna look back I still like I still like for um you know for what it is these definitely didn't do it I don't even want to bring those over so these are probably 
the better of them. Uh, the Paul Rubens, the Fabriano didn't perform bad, but it, again, it worked way, but it worked against me. So there's no way I'm going to use it again. Definitely staying with the Paul Rubens still one. And that's why. All right. We'll do a more expensive paper comparison soon, but I got to go guys. See you later.